I'm Ryan Moore. I'm the director and producer of the feature film documentary Manny about boxer Manny Pacquiao. So I got to meet him serendipitously at a charity event in LA uh, through friends and family. And this was after the De La Hoya fight, right? So um, we met, we went to a few karaoke outings together. Nice. And then sure enough, like I pitched him and his team about the uh, documentary concept and sure enough, Manny loved it. So that was the start of it all. Yeah, um, this was a huge responsibility. Um, being the national hero he is to a country of over 100 million people, you know, when, when Manny fights, the entire country comes to a standstill. There's no crime, you know, there's like everyone is glued to their TVs. And knowing that, um, I felt like I wanted to do the best film I possibly could because they're the biggest critics of them all, you know, and, um, and Filipinos like Manny, I mean, boxers for one, come like once a generation, you know, and to be able to do his life story and also for me being Filipino, to be able to tell his story for the rest of the Filipinos around the world who truly love him. It was, I mean, it was definitely, there was definitely a lot of pressure for sure. I wanted it to appeal to not only boxing fans who love Manny, but also non-boxing fans. Um, I wanted it to be a story that um, would inspire people and that had a bigger message outside of just sports. Um, I wanted to I wanted to illustrate. I wanted to show Manny as a human, as a person, not as sometimes this iconic hero that he's constantly kind of portrayed to be yeah. in media. So that's, that was my goal was, and I told Manny this, I said, you know, I want to be, I want to be with you everywhere, just capturing your life. And he agreed to let me have full control. He wouldn't have any part whatsoever in the editing process or final approval or, or final approval. He never, uh, you know, he, he never attempted to, to try to um, interrupt my process or even try to uh, affect it whatsoever. Um, he just said, you know what, I trust you with this. He gave me his personal archive of footage, you know, his home videos. He'd never even watched himself, hundreds of them. You know, and um, um, I, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to find what I could to make him more as just a man and, and, try, to, and try to be able to convince that, to, I mean, to convey that to people that Yes, he's had this incredible fairy tale of a, of a life story, but at the same time, at, at his core, he's just a man. He's allowed me to be like, in the bedroom with his wife, with his kids. You know, like I've been everywhere with him: the U.S., all around the U.S., like, Texas, New York, L.A., Las Vegas, um, in the Philippines, in Congress, at his home his personal space, his mom, his uncle, everyone, you know, I know everyone. And when you become that close, especially with Philippine culture, like you become their family. Yeah. And so there are things I, you know, I saw that, you know, I, I, I wasn't sure how it was going to treat and I was and I had to be, I had to be, I had to be honest about it. You know, I had to, uh, 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 you know, approach it with journalistic integrity, but at the same time, it was definitely a weird balancing act because, you know, being on the inside and, seeing all these things, it, you know, and then, you know, being with, being so close, being, becoming really close friends with Manny, it definitely, it definitely was a, a difficult juggling act, at, juggling act at times. So, um, but I hope he likes the movie. <laughs> hasn't seen it he hasn't seen it yet. Um, there are things that I kind of worry about, and I don't know how he's going to feel about them. You know, so I know for sure some of his camp there are going to be things that they're not, that they may not particularly be excited about, yeah. but, um, you know, we captured it. It's there. You know, the people spoke on things and all we did is just put it together for people to see. That's it, you know. Um, I, I, I didn't, I didn't 
put anything in the film that wasn't filmed. It wasn't captured. Right. These are all things for all these years, having filmed, you know, filming with Manny since 2010, um, and also um, being given all these personal tapes of his, right, that have footage that he doesn't even know exists. Manny never watched these tapes. He literally just gave me a box of all these tapes, and he hasn't even seen them. He's like, here are my masters. And I don't even think he knew what he was giving me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So after watching, for me, after watching over 1,200 hours of footage, you know, there's just so much to tell, but um, ultimately, we had so much to use, so we had everything we needed in order to kind of put together the story we felt needed to be told. No, uh, the camera actually cut. Okay. Yeah, so the biographer who was on that bus mm -hmm. captured something that he was supposed to cut. <laughs> yeah, that was real. So, yeah, um, if, if that were, because that was filmed, that was one of the, that was footage that Manny gave to me. Yeah. Um, in that box of tapes. Um, but if that were my team on, in that bus, we wouldn't have stopped filming. We would have kept going. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but you know what I can say though, okay. Because I, I do want to give you something about his camp. I won't name people specifically, all right? But I'll say this about the camp. When you have an entourage and a camp of 80 people, 80 plus people, right? Everyone seems to have their own motives. And there are even factions within his camp that sometimes are actually even sort of at war with one another. So one part maybe may say, Hey, you know, we got this endorsement deal for Manny. Another one may say, no, they'll tell Manny, hey, don't, don't sign that deal, it's not good for you, because they're jealous that, that, that a deal was brought to him by the other side. It's, it's a very interesting dynamic, um, but I think that um, that was definitely one of the things that people are very curious about as well. Like, who are some of these people on the inside? What are they, like, are they, are they serving Manny's best interests, mm -hmm. right? That's always been something that um, has been in question. Um, I think that in boxing, um, unfortunately, because of the lifespan of a boxer, it's a very short lifespan of that type of athlete, so people typically try to get the most out of a boxer when they can. You know, so it took me some time to gain the trust of Manny. When we first started filming in 2010, um, he and I made it a pact in his bedroom that he would, that we were gonna, we were gonna do this together, right? He would entrust me with this. And so we started filming, and I felt like at first there was definitely a wall, you know what I mean? And of course, if you're an athlete of that stature who is followed around by 24/7 shows like that, it's typically done for a very short amount of time, you know what I mean? For a few weeks, that's it. But all of a sudden, to have cameras around you for years, and without even notice, I'll show up at his house and be, you know, be like, hey, man, I'm here. You know, and it, sometimes I wouldn't even let him know. I'd just be there every day, and he'd just be like, oh, my gosh, you know, like, when is this guy going to be? You know, <laughs> he look at me. And sometimes he'd look at Jinky, his wife, and Jinky would be like, no, you let Ryan film. You know, and so she, 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 wanted, she definitely went to bat for me at times. But, um, one of the greatest moments that happened was when I finally did gain his trust, and this is back in 2011, that he and I built a, a stronger bond. Um, one day, I'll never forget, we were at the wild card gym in the back room, and he said to me, you know, Ryan, I'm gonna take you to where my hut was, my old house was, it was an old Nepo hut. And I was, I couldn't wait. Yeah, I mean, it's something he doesn't do. He's never really done for anyone. And in fact, um, a writer in the Philippines has been begging him to take him there for all these years. And Manny just kind of, he's kept that for himself. But that's why I knew when, when Manny told me he was gonna do that for this film, I knew he was emotionally invested in this. And he knew that this film would be his definitive, you know, legacy film. So when we went, um, we were walking through the jungle and we had, a, we had an army, like an armed, like with automatic rifles, you know, army around us because, you know, in the south, um, there's still civil unrest. Yeah. 
So, you know, walking through and it, it was a trip because there's just armed guards everywhere around us, you know, like throughout the forest, throughout the forest, throughout the jungle, just walking around us. And it was, it was surreal, but when we walked to the, to the location of where his original hut was, which is no longer there, his mind, his eyes, it just went somewhere else. He just paused, you know. And the crazy thing is too, on the way over there, we ran to his uncle who was pumping water from a well. Yeah, I was like, well, what are the chances? You know, his uncle was still there. Um, but Manny walked into the clearing, and then he just kind of just stood there for a while. I was like, wow, you know, I knew we captured something special. Oh, while I was filming? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, um, I think when you when you become sort of a, a global sort of superstar. Um, and when you're someone like Manny who isn't satisfied with, become, with being this, you know, um, very, I mean, this highly, this celebrated boxer, you want to do other things. You want to be a movie star. You want to be a, you want to be a congressman. You want to be, you know, you want to be um, a, um, well, you know, you want to be an influencer, yes. Yeah. Um, when, you, when you take on those roles, when you, when you go into politics, especially in the Philippines, which is a very corrupt, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of corruption there. Um, naturally, you're gonna, you're gonna have people who are gonna change their minds about you, you know, and they're, you know, who were originally diehard boxing fans will say, you know what, um, I don't care for him anymore because now he's become this guy who is gonna be tarnished by the very sort of greedy, soiled system there. And I, and I think that was one of the things I saw too, and, you know, because I was allowed on the inside, um, you know, people would ask me all the time, you know, what, you know, what are his politics? Like, what, you know, like, you know, what kind of a person is he now? Because before it was so simple when he was a boxer. Yeah. Uh, you know, he'd just go in there and he would fight for the people and he would bring honor to the country and that was it. But now, now, you know, he's, he's debating on bills that have to do with um, reproductive health, you know what I mean? And other, you know, other things like that. It's like, you know, it's, tough. it's and, and yeah, and, and and plus with a country like the Philippines that is, that is um, very religious, you know, it has very deep roots in Catholicism. Um, you know, once you start, um, once you start sort of uh, affecting people's opinions of of things that are related to religion, because in politics, you know, sometimes, especially in the Philippines. Church and state are not separated. No, they're not. That they're not, and unlike here in the states, there's a separation in the Philippines. They're actually, I mean, they're still like you know, they're still pretty much one and the same. Um, then that also affects your, you know, your approval rating of what people think about you. So, you know, that's something I definitely saw all these years. Manny trying to be a, bo a boxer and a, and a congressman. Hi, I'm Ryan Moore. I'm the director and producer of the documentary feature film Manny and you're watching the movie one.